Hello, my name is Mike Driscoll, and in this particular tutorial, we are going to enhance the image viewer that we created with WX Python and make it do other things, like adding a slideshow. So here is the code that we ended with in the last video. Um, all it does is create a cross-platform UI that you can use to load photos. So for example, if we wanted to load an image, we could just load it like this. But it would be nice if we had some buttons so that we could navigate through a folder of images, and we just don't have that right now. So let's uh, go ahead and update this code and see if we can get it to work uh, in, a, in a nicer way. So normally when I have lots of uh, new widgets I'm going to add, I like to just kind of separate out the widgets into their own function. So I can kind of create a layout function where I'll put all the code in that will contain all the, all the, all the widget code, basically. So let's go ahead and move these up a little bit. And let's see, we want three buttons, for one for back and forward, and probably like a slideshow button. So let's just create a button sizer instead of a horizontal sizer. Let's see. And then we'll change this to be self.max size. And this looks okay. I think we'll get rid of the browse button and use a toolbar though. Let's see, go to that stuff. All right, so now we have that. We don't need the browse button anymore. So all that can go away. Um, let's see, I think the other thing we should add is the buttons themselves. So sometimes it's nice to create like a helper function to create your buttons for you, if you especially if the buttons are all gonna be doing basically the same thing. So what I sometimes do is I'll create a list that has kind of the button elements to it. So I have the button sizer, and I'll say we want it to do on previous, which is the function that button will call. And we need a slideshow button. Help if we put that in a nice wrapper there. And I'll that to button sizer. And we'll do self taught on slideshow. Let's see, we need a next button too. So let's add that. Next also goes on the button sizer and self on next. Alright, that looks pretty good. Then we just need to create a loop. So for um, let's see. Make sure we code this the right way here. Or data and button data, label, sizer, and handler, false data, dot button builder, which we haven't written yet. We'll take our label, sizer, and handler. Okay. And we need one more piece of code down here to add the button sizer to the main sizer. Um, let's see. So let's go ahead and add that. Oops. And we'll center it. Okay, and we'll just get rid of the fit and layout for now. Okay, so this code isn't going to work right now. Because first of all, we didn't call it, so I'm adding that. But even if we run it now, we don't have all of the, the functions defined, so it's going to get kind of mad about that. I need to fix a couple of things here and there. Let's try rerunning that. Yeah, it doesn't like that we don't have these, these uh, event handler is defined yet. So we'll go ahead and define those quick. Let's see. Self.on, whoops. 
run previous. For now, we'll just give these all passes just to get them working. And we need a non next function that takes an event. All right. That should make that help happy. And we also need our button builder, our button builder function. So let's see here. Um, let's see. And type it right. Builder. And the button builder takes our label. Whoops. Label, sizer, and the event handler. So each button will be defined using any uh, WX top button. We will set the label equal to label, and then we'll bind that that button to the handler that we pass in. So each of the times you'll set it up to use the event button because they're buttons, and we'll put the handler in there. All right. That looks right. And then of course we need to add the button to our the sizer that we passed in. So we'll just do that right here. And we'll center the button inside of the horizontal sizer. So hopefully if I did all that right and maybe run this, it'll be a little bit happier. Oops. Alright, try that again. Okay, so we have this, and we have our buttons. Still not quite the right size though, so let's go down here. And we probably need to set a size on the frame. Uh, let's try 400 by 400. See if that looks any better. Uh, I must have a fit somewhere in here. Um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Hmm. I'm not seeing it, but something is making it not set correctly. Oh, yeah, I see what I did wrong. These are supposed to be 240. Size equals 400 by 400. Okay, so this is setting the size of the frame. This is setting the size of the image. Let's try running that again. All right, so now we have our buttons kind of the way we want them. It'd be nice to have this centered. We can fix that here in a minute. Let's go back up here. And we'll try doing this. There we go. So now all of our widgets are centered and they are showing up the way we want them to. But now that I've got rid of the browse button, we can't actually browse for the uh, any uh, folder, so that's not going to work the way we want it to. So probably the next step would be to create a way to browse for that again. So we're going to go down here to the frame, and we're going to add a toolbar. Um, I think toolbars will look a little bit nicer than just using plain buttons, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's see, we want to create a toolbar. It doesn't take any arguments besides self. And inside of this, you can just create a toolbar instance by saying self dot create toolbar. And uh, create toolbar is a function that's or a method on the frame object, so that's why you have to do this code here. And then, of course, if we want to add stuff to it, we do um, self.toolbar. Let's set tool um, bitmap size. And I think it accepts uh, 16 by 16, um, 32 by 32, and maybe a couple of other default sizes. You can kind of play around with that yourself if you want to. 
Anyway, there are some icons that come with uh, Python, uh, Debex Python. You can access those in Art Provider. Uh, we're going to kind of play around with this a little bit. Oops. We'll say we want to use Art File Open. We're going to use the Art Toolbar. And we'll set it also to 16 by 16. And then we'll create an open tool um, item. This will be the this will become the button that you actually click on. So this is just the button bar, and this is the tool button that we're going to put on the bu the button bar. Okay. So get that to work. We go toolbar that add tool. Tell it to use any ID that Debrix Python finds to use. Give it a name. Use the open icon that we created and give it a helpful tool tip. So let's see, open an image directory would probably work pretty good. All right. Then we need to add a binding, an event binder, so we can actually use this code. So we'll say event, event menu. And I'll say open directory and then open tool. All right, so we're binding the event to the frame here, and it's the menu event. And this is the event handler uh, on open directory, and then you bind it to the open tool button. Okay, and then to show the toolbar, you have to do toolbar.realize. All right. So that should work the way we want it to. We still need our um, event handler. So we'll do that, self event, and pass for now. And we'll make sure this looks right. So before we do that, I have to call it create toolbar. Okay. So now we have a button that doesn't do anything. So that's cool, but we do have the open button now. All right, so let's get this working. We need to use the dir dialog to open up a dialog that is will only let you select directories. We can give it some helpful text. Uh, we take the style flags. We will use uh, just the default style and I'll call it DLG. And then we will show it to the user. And the reason I'm writing it this way is that we want to show it modal. And then if the user presses the OK button, we're going to check and see if they pressed OK. If they did, then we will grab the folder path, which you can do by just doing dialog.getPath. And then we can grab all the photos out of it using Python's glob module, which we need to import up here. So let's import glob. And we will do glob.glob. Um, let's see, I probably should go import OS too. One minute. You could also do this with uh, pathlib if you wanted to. I will just do glob for now. OS.path join all right folder path comma star jpeg is we only want to load jpegs right now and let's make this self dot panel so we can access it okay so we've got our photos self dot panel dot photos Equals photos. If photos, we will call self dot panel dot update photo, and we'll update it to the first photo in the list. So photo zero. And we need to add these other attributes to it. So we'll say length of the photos. And otherwise, we'll do 
yourself dot panel dot reset which you don't have set up either all right so this will sort of work but not really because we need to go add some items to our panel now to get this to work the way we want it to so let's go back to the other code to the panel code up here and add some of that information self dot photos is going to be an empty list right now um, probably need to keep track of the self dot current photo. We'll just say zero because it's going to almost always be the beginning one. Total photos is zero. All right, that looks pretty good. We also need to do the whole reset and update photo part. So let's see. I think we'll just reload. We'll just call this um, update photo. Just rename this one. And we'll pass it the image that we want to update. So now we don't need this because we're not going to use that text box anymore. Just load our image up with that. Recite in this code just scales the image down all looks right. I think that'll work for that part. Um, we need to add a reset function. All right, so reset, we'll just reset it back to a boring image again. So it'll be a black image in case we like mess something up. We can just reset it again. Oops. That's the main reason to have this. Uh, done again. So self dot. Oops. Let's reset the panel to image panel. Oops, my bad. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> okay, bitmap equals wx dot bitmap. Okay. Self dot image control. Dot set bitmap to our bitmap. And then we need to reset the current photo back to zero. And we also need to reset our photos back to an empty list. So this is basically resets the entire control if, if we need to. Okay, I think that covered everything necessary. So let's see if we can get any of this stuff to work. So open, go to our breakpoint. Now we have an open, it's finding our folder, hit OK, and I messed something up. Mainframe object has no attribute folder path. OK. All right, so I did something silly there. Let's go ahead and fix that. And figure out what that's complaining about. Ah, I have a, a dash instead of an equal sign. Okay, this probably doesn't need to be a self dot anyway. Let's go ahead and fix that. That folder path doesn't exist outside of this function or method. Okay, let's try that again. Make sure we can get this to load correctly. Open this folder, and now it doesn't like something else. Glob takes I ah, yes. Okay, so what are you not liking here? Um, let's see, glob.glob, os.path.join, ah, this part. Can help me, watch me debug my own code here. Okay, let's try that again. Open. Okay, so I loaded the right, the first image. If we click next. And previous and slideshow, they don't do anything because we still haven't coded those up yet. Those still have passes in them, as you can see. So that's the last step I think we have to do, and then we'll have a fully functional piece of code. All right, so let's figure out how to do this. So on previous, if not self.photos, so basically we see it say if it's not, if it's empty, we just return early. Otherwise, if um, self.current photo equals zero, we want the self.current photo to equal self dot total photos minus one. 
Otherwise, um, self dot current photo and just uh, take away one. All right, and then we can just run self dot update photo, pass it the photos list and use it by indexing in Python to grab the current photo from the list and then it should update correctly. Um, actually, we'll just leave this one alone right now. I don't want to get just next and, and um, previous working. Okay, so this one is similar. We still want it to return early if there's no photos um, selected. So this doesn't do anything. These buttons shouldn't do anything if self.photos is empty, basically. Um, but if it isn't empty, we want it to do self dot current current photo equals self dot total photos minus one. That means we've got we're at the end of the list, so we need to need to start over again. Otherwise, it can just be self dot current photo uh, plus equals one. So we just increase it by one. And then we can just copy this code because it does the same exact thing. We'll update our photo. So now when we run this, hopefully we can go back, select our fo photo, our folder, and now we should be able to click next and previous and get it to do different things. So that works the way we want it to. Now the last little bit we need to do is the slideshow part. And the slideshow isn't really that hard to do. Um, let's go ahead and do this. So all events are bound to the same event handler. So we need to do a quick get event object to make sure that we know what's going on here. Well, actually, what we want to do here, so we're going to change the, the, the string on the button label so we know if the slideshow is active or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the label off of the button. So button.getLabel. And then we will check and see what the label is. So if the button equals um, like slideshow, we want it to do self dot slideshow timer dot start. And we'll have it uh, have it uh, alternate every three seconds. So that's three thousand milliseconds. And we'll change the label, set label to stop. Otherwise, we will set um, slideshow timer. I think I need to go define a slideshow timer. I think I forgot to do that. Button set label back to slideshow. All right, let's figure out what I forgot here. I think I forgot the timer business. Yep. Okay, so we go back up here. And let's add our timer. So slideshow timer equals wx.timer. And we bind it to the, well, set the parent to our panel. WX timer basically lets you uh, fire an event every so, uh, every so often. So in this case, we're going to create the timer and have it fire every three seconds. But we need to tell it what to do when the event fires. So you gotta do self.bind to bind it to something. And we want to bind it to the timer event. And we want to bind it so that it goes calls the onNext function. And we need to tell it what to bind to, so we're binding it to the timer. So the event timer widget is bound to event timer and it calls the onNext function which we defined down here. So it's gonna call this function automatically in advance. All right, see if this all makes sense. And if I coded this all right, or if I have some other typos in here. Open, hit slideshow, it changed to stop like we wanted it to. Oh, and it automatically advanced. So every few seconds it'll advance to the next slide. And whenever we're done, we can just hit stop. And because it's already updating which number in the photo list it's at, you can just hit next and it'll continue from where it left off. So now you have an image viewer that has a slideshow, slideshow function as well as 
uh, previous and next buttons, and you've learned a little bit about how to add a toolbar. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any co questions or comments, go ahead, ahead and feel free to add them uh, in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.